Gambia, Angola, China Holding, Gash, producers of the finest tomato paste in the Gambia, Jeja, tomato paste, available in 5 kilos, 1 kilo and in sachets. For wholesale and retail, visit our factory at Banjulanding. We are also producers of Jeja mineral water, cool, clear and fresh. Gash, Gambia, Angola, China Holding, with headquarters at Fatu Golden Plaza, Mile 7, Bertel Harding Highway. Gash Group also provides the best security company. Gash Security for your offices, warehouses, homes, and personal property. Gash Group for all your construction projects, offering you quality water reticulation for your gardens, pump irrigation, tidal irrigation projects, and all types of buildings. You can contact Gash on 396 7894 700 8993 373 Visit us at Gash Global Group on Battle Harden Highway, Fatu Golden Plaza. Our website www.gashglobal.com Gambia Angola China Holding Gash Here are five ways you can help combat stigma and discrimination as we fight against coronavirus COVID-19. 1. Educate your friends and family that COVID-19 is not specific to any race, nationality or skin color. 2. Do not associate migrants with the virus. In many contexts, migrants are healthy and key players in nation building. 3. Remind others that discrimination may lead people to hide their symptoms rather than seek treatment. This puts everyone else at risk. 4. Be kind, considerate and helpful to others in these difficult times. 5. If you know anyone experiencing symptoms, encourage them to dial 1025 for free. Warm reception to our studio here in Sarekunda. This is Star TV News with me, Maimuna Jufadera. In the headlines tonight, 173 new cases registered as five new deaths of COVID-19 recorded in the Gambia. TRRC suspends its public hearing still for the notice due to surging COVID-19 cases. NHRC and GBA rescue themselves from police investigation on Ibrahim Gurgimbub's torture allegation. GAF Army spokesman debunks soldiers' frontline workers' claim of not being fed on the international scene. Coronavirus UK to roll out millions of 90 minute rapid trust. Afghan security forces retake control over Jalalabad to prison. Zimbabwe stock market trading resumes after holding in June. Well, those were the headlines and now the news in details. In a press release sent to media houses, the Medicine Control Agency, MCA, in collaboration with the Pharmacy Council, the Gambia, PCG, hereby informed the general public that it is illegal for any person or entity to be engaged in unauthorized import, distribution, storage, sale and use of COVID-19 test kits or diagnostic in the Gambia. Therefore, a person or entity shall not be engaged in the import, distribution, storage, sale and use of COVID-19 test kits or diagnostics unless authorized by the Medicine Control Agency. Currently, only National Public Health Laboratory in Koto and Medical Research Council MRC facilities are the recognized institutions authorized to conduct COVID-19 testing in the Gambia. Therefore, the public is hereby warned not to visit any drugstore, pharmacy, private diagnostic center, private laboratory, private clinic or private hospital for COVID-19 testing as their test kits may be substandard and falsified counterfeit. MCA strictly warned against the illegal import, seal and testing of customers using potential unsafe or ineffective COVID-19 test kits, this is very dangerous, unethical and could pose a serious public health hazard. Individuals and entities who fail to abide shall face the full strength of the law. Signed by the Executive Director of Medicine Control Agency, the release ends. 
Five new deaths registered bring in to 14 the total number of documented COVID-19 related deaths in the country. A crude case fatality ratio of 2.1% as 173 new cases registered. Bintakuli has the rest of the details. Over a period of four days, taking the total number of COVID-19 cases ever confirmed in the country to 671. This represents an average of 43 cases per day over the last four days. The case who recently absconded has voluntarily returned to the COVID-19 treatment facility at MRC. 11 new recoveries recorded, bringing the total to 79 recoveries registered. 747 new laboratory test results received from MRCG and NPHL. Of this, 584 tested negative, both new and repeats. 173 newly returned positive and 18 newly tested inconclusive or probable for COVID-19. Whereas 11 persons were newly taken into quarantine, 20 were discharged. The country currently has 529 people in quarantine, 571 active cases, 43 probable cases and a crude case fatality ratio of 2.1%. Reports emerged in the weekend showed that more people have died from the deadly disease as photos of Red Cross officials busy at cemeteries emerge online. It comes as President Barrow's government got sucked by the disease with his vice president and three ministers testing positive for the disease. The health ministry in their latest report calls for calm as they continue to monitor developments. For Star TV News, I am Bintakuli. In the light of the growing seriousness of the COVID-19 situation in the Gambia, the Truth Reconciliation and Reparation Commission has decided to suspend its public hearing still for the notice. The suspension will take effect from the 4th of August 2020, said the chairman of the commission, Dr. Lamin JCC, in a statement that the champ tells us more. The chairman said that the decision to suspend hearing was reached after careful consideration and consultation at the level of the commission and between the commission and the minister of justice at a time when the number of COVID-19 cases in the country is rising at an alarming rate. The commission is deeply concerned about the safety of both commissioners and staff of the TRRC as well as its media partners witnesses, security personnel, and indeed all members of the public. During the period of the suspension of public hearings, the chairman assures that the various committees of the commission will continue working on their various agendas. The commission will also continue working on putting together some aspects of the final report. Therefore, the commission secretary will also remain partially open for their staff that will be coming to work on a roster system and others will work from home during the period of suspension. The TRRC encourages all members of the public to take all cautionary measures to keep themselves, their families, relatives, friends and communities safe from the coronavirus, to always wear masks, wash hands regularly with soap or use hand sanitizers, observe social distancing, and follow all other guidelines recommended by the World Health Organization and the country's health authorities. Reporting for Star TV News, I am Dado Cha. The National Human Rights Commission Chairperson Emmanuel Daniel Juf says his institution and the Gambia Bar Association GBA will not join the police to investigate torture allegations leveled on anti-crime unit ACU Commissioner Gurgi Boop. Zaglin Koli reports. In an interview with Kirfatu, Inspector General of Police Momar Job revealed that he had placed Commissioner Boop on administrative leave and has launched an investigation panel consisting of members from the police, state intelligence services, Gambia Armed Forces, NHRC and the GBA. However, the team may not be assembled after the NHRC chairperson revealed that his institution sent a letter to the IGP on Tuesday, the 28th of July, 2020, with a list of demands which must be met before the NHRC and the GBA could join the investigation panel. Speaking to Chairperson Juve, he argued that the NHRC joining the police in this investigation panel could jeopardize their independence, especially considering the fact that their institution should be seen as independent when investigating alleged human rights violations of civilians at the hands of security officers. 
It can be recalled that the NHRC released a presser on Sunday, the 26th of July, 2020, condemning police brutality and informing the public that they are investigating the said allegations. Ibrahim Asane hit in the genitals by ACU Commissioner Mboub and will recommend the appropriate action to take to make sure that justice is done if it is established that any form of torture was committed. For now, the police will have to investigate Ibrahim's torture allegations with the SIS and the GAF. Jacqueline Colley, reporting for Star TV News. The army spokesman, Major Lamin Sanyang, said that it was unethical for soldiers to run to the media and complain about issues regarding their job. He added that the army operates within a chain of command and that the soldiers concerned soon have lodged complaints to their unit commander and not the press. Well, that the charm files in this report. Some Gambian soldiers among the frontline workers deployed at the Serokonda and Bundung police stations were complaining of lack of food and benefits. The soldiers, who wished not to be named for fear of retribution from their command, said that they have been working for long hours without being fed and paid allowances. The aggrieved soldiers told a Freedom newspaper that they work from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. on a given day without being served food by the army command. The soldiers, numbering 20, have been taking part in an operation to help enforce the COVID-19 control regulations within the KMC locality, particularly around market areas. Other security agencies, such as the police and immigration, are part of the operation. The soldiers said since their deployment to Serokonda and Bundung in March of this year, they were only fed for one week, and after which they were never fed again. They said that 200,000 was disposed for their feeding. That feeding budget lasted for one week. They have been feeding themselves from their own pockets since then. Soldiers who do not have money to buy food will work the whole day without eating. Their condition is miserable, they said. The other security agencies, which are deployed with them, are also facing the same dilemma. They said they are suffering, they need help. When contacted for comment, the army spokesman, Major Lamin Sanyang said that it was unethical for soldiers to run to the media and complain about issues regarding their job. He added that the army operates within a chain of command and that the soldiers concerned should have lodged a complaint or concern to their unit commander and not the press. For the quiz as to whether he was dismissing the soldiers' allegation as false, Sanyang in response remarked, no. What I am saying is that in the military, there is a way we do things. There is a chain of command that everyone has to follow. So those coming to the press, I think it was a misplaced way of getting their points across. That is not how we work in the military, he said. As regards the question or the complaint by some uh, members of the security services, especially uh, members of the Gambia Armed Forces that are part of um, these frontline workers, on this um, COVID-19 task force by the government of the Gambia. Um, I wish to clarify that um, the Gambia Armed Forces Command itself um, has not received um, any information or any complaint from our personnel who are on, the, on, the, on this operation as regards um, the non-payment or, or their, you know, the issues that have to do with their feeding and um, mobility constraints. Um, the fact of the matter is that um, in March of this year, after the, um, the proclamation by His Excellency the President of a state of public emergency in the Gambia, the Gambia Armed Forces um, launched Operation Cracknot. And this operation um, is in response to a call from civil authority or a request from civil authority for the members of the Gambia Armed Forces to come to the aid of civil authority at, um, during that em this emergency. And we deployed um, our personnel to come to the rescue of civil authority. At that time, um, our operation was mainly focused on um, <coughs> um, providing um, um, security along our borders. Signing said that the soldiers concerned should understand that the media does not fall within their operational command. Therefore, all complaints and concerns they have should be channeled through their commanders and army meetings. Mr. Sanyang added that the operation in question was part of the Army's constitutional responsibility to come to the aid of civil authorities during emergency situations. He said that there is no monetary benefits attached to the Army's operation, crack nuts, which is to help the government to combat the COVID-19. 
The army spokesman said that the soldiers taking part in the said operation have been equipped with personal protection gears such as face masks and other safety gadgets to protect them from contracting the coronavirus. He added that it is a requirement for soldiers and people living in military barracks to wear face masks. Reporting for Star TV News, I am Dado Chan. Well, those were the local stories. We will be back with the international news after the short break. Please stay tuned. Gambia, Angola, China holding Gash, producers of the finest tomato paste in the Gambia. Jaja tomato paste, available in 5 kilos, 1 kilo and in sachets. For wholesale and retail, visit our factory at Banjulanding. We are also producers of Jaja mineral water, cool, clear and fresh. Gash, Gambia, Angola, China holding, with headquarters at Fatu Golden Plaza, Mile 7, Bertel Harding Highway. Gash Group also provides the best security company. Company, Gash Security for your offices, warehouses, homes, and personal property. Gash Group for all your construction projects, offering you quality water reticulation for your gardens, pump irrigation, tidal irrigation projects, and all types of buildings. You can contact Gash on 396 7894 Visit us at Gash Global Group on Battle Harden Highway. To Golden Plaza, our website www.gashglobal.com. Gambia, Angola, China holding Gash. Welcome back after that short commercial break, and we now look at the news beyond our borders with several countries racing to develop a COVID 19 vaccine. The World Health Organization is downplaying expectation. It had says there may never be a silver bullet that eradicates the virus, and that testing and containment efforts are still our best defense. The United Kingdom, meanwhile, has just announced tests that can provide a result within 90 minutes. Well, Al Jazeera Sunni Galago reports from London. The technology is fast moving. From next week, testing for coronavirus in the UK will be easier than ever. Less invasive, with no need for a health professional to administer them, 5.8 million on-the-spot tests will be using DNA alongside 450,000 swab samples. And rather than the current one to two day wait, the results are known within an hour and a half. We can expand testing uh, capacity uh, further uh, and into settings where, for instance, in, in schools we have a, currently we have survey testing, so we have some testing, that would be able to be expanded. But also looking at, uh, looking across the community where we want to test a, uh, people who don't have symptoms to find out where the virus is. The testing system itself is complex and reliant on multiple supply chains to source the products, but it's hoped that it could open up a new phase in mass testing across the country. These tests could signify a game-changing moment. Not only will they be able to be carried out by practically anyone, but they can also detect seasonal flu. Meanwhile, those behind the testing say that controls are being put in place so as they can avoid any false negatives. Britain had come under severe criticism at the start of the pandemic. The government was blamed for being too slow to go into lockdown, too lax in testing, and had failed to get a successful track and trace system up and running. And despite promising leads in its bid to find a vaccine, recent regional surges in the UK and the rest of Europe are a warning that the pandemic is nowhere near over. There is no silver bullet at the moment and there might never be. For now, stopping outbreaks comes down to the basics of public health and disease control. Testing, isolating, and treating patients, and tracing and quarantining their contacts. The message, more or less the same as it was at the start of the pandemic. The basic prevention measures are as crucial as ever as governments try to stamp out rising infection rates to avoid the full lockdowns that have crippled economies around the world. Sonia Gallego, Al Jazeera, London. Hundreds of prisoners are on the run after gunmen affiliated with ISIL ISIS earlier stormed a prison in Jalalabad. Authorities have regained control, but only after at least 30 people were killed, including several of the assailants. Al Jazeera's Andrew Chappell reports. Afghan security forces spent much of Monday waiting for the right opportunity to assault ISIL gunmen who had taken over the prison in Jalalabad. 
In a coordinated attack, it was taken over on Sunday and hundreds of ISIL fighters set free. In the battle to retake the facility, more than 30 were killed, including prisoners and prison guards, soldiers and civilians. Ten attackers died. Their bodies were laid out for the media by the provincial police. ISIL remains dangerous in these parts, and most of its captured fighters in the east of Afghanistan are in this facility. Territorially, it is in retreat. It was um, never particularly, it, it never held um, huge tracts of land, but it did hold significant districts in the east of the country and a combined um, fight between Afghan government forces, including uh, civilian uh, forces raised from the civilians in the local area, uh, US airstrikes, US on the ground and the Taliban basically cleared it out of much of eastern Afghanistan and elsewhere it only ever held pockets. Bodies of two Taliban prisoners were also found, apparently killed by ISIL fighters. These scenes are in stark contrast to the rest of the country, as a rare truce was observed between the Taliban and Afghan government for the Eid holiday, ahead of an expected return to talks by the two sides. Andrew Chappelle, Al Jazeera. Trading has resumed on Zimbabwe's stock market after it was halted in June to help stabilize the nation's currency. But people there are facing their worst financial crisis in more than a decade and tensions are rising as the economy worsens. Al Jazeera's Haro Mutasa has more from Harare. After weeks of uncertainty and inconvenience for investors, trading on Zimbabwe stock exchange resumes. Stockbrokers say the first day back went relatively well. Most people were just watching to see what was going to happen. So that's why we said it was a good day. There wasn't panic selling that other people were thinking was going to happen. The government suspended trading at the end of June to try and stabilize the Zimbabwe dollar. Government leaders suspected some individuals and companies were moving money out of the country, causing shortages in foreign currency and fueling the black market. Three companies, including Old Mutual, which is listed on the London Stock Exchange, aren't allowed to resume trade until they meet certain requirements. When Robert Mugabe was removed from power in a coup three years ago, President Emerson Mnangagwa promised reforms. But critics say he's failing to turn around the economy and on human rights, arrests and abuses are on the increase. Last Friday, streets in the capital Harare went largely deserted and businesses shut as security forces stopped protests against the poor economy and corruption from going ahead. Human rights lawyers say dozens of people were arrested. Uh, some were abducted, uh, disappeared for a couple of hours, some for more than two days, uh, and then they were later surrendered uh, to the police. Uh, one of them who was disappeared for more time was actually just uh, dumped somewhere close to his home. And uh, when he was uh, then um, released or when he reappeared, uh, he was severely tortured. An opposition leader, Jacob Garivume, and a freelance journalist, Hopewell Chingono, remain in detention, accused of using social media to incite anti-government protests. As worker salaries continue to be eroded by rising inflation, now at nearly 800%, opposition groups are threatening more demonstrations as the country shows no obvious sign of recovery. Harumutasa, Al Jazeera, Harare. Well, as I'm sure you know, the impact of the pandemic on the global economy has been devastating. Millions of people have lost their jobs worldwide. You may even be one of them. And with the number of cases rising, the threat of renewed lockdown is looming over many countries. The world's largest economy, the US, has the highest number of COVID-19 infections and deaths. And it's officially in recession. It could get worse because several states are pausing or reversing the easing of restrictions after a surge in new cases. In Europe, despite the manufacturing industry gathering pace, the Eurozone's economy has plunged to its steepest, into its steepest recession on record. Countries like Spain and Portugal have seen sharp declines, especially in their tourism industries. And new outbreaks and flooding are threatening the world's second largest economy, China, as well as Japan. The world's leading financial hubs, such as Hong Kong and Singapore, are also in recession. Robert Scott is a senior international economist at the Economic Policy Institute. He joins us now live via Skype from North Potomac uh, in Maryland. Good to have you with us, Robert. So what can countries do with this terrible dilemma, uh, the need to balance their economies against protecting people's lives? 
Well, I think first and foremost, uh, countries have to get the virus under control. If uh, we look around the world, uh, countries such as uh, uh, South Korea, uh, Germany, Italy, New Zealand, uh, that have shut down uh, for prolonged periods of time and gotten the virus completely under control, were able to reopen. Uh, in the United States, on the other hand, we had a very uh, porous and ineffective shutdown. Uh, Dr. Fauci, the leading expert in the U.S., uh, has estimated that only about half of it was, uh, was about 50 percent effective. It just did not do the job, and they opened up too fast. And as a result, we've gotten a huge outbreak of new infections, and the economy is suffering. But, but complete lockdowns are, 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 are disastrous, aren't they, for for economies in uh, of any country? I mean, what about localized lockdowns? Is perhaps that the, the future? As uh, cases appear in certain areas, then, then you shut down just, just little parts of the country and therefore small parts of the economy? I think uh, it depends on the circumstances. For example, we see uh, presently uh, in Australia, I think in Victoria, they've shut down just the state of, of Victoria where they have uh, uh, an, a, an outbreak. Uh, but again, we have to put this into perspective. I think they had 600 cases a day in, in Victoria, in the United States, in one state of Florida, we're having 15,000 new cases every day. So the scale of the problem is much larger in the United States. Um, but, but certainly, going forward, as we get the virus under control, uh, uh, rolling lockdowns will probably be the best answer to minimize the harm to the economy. In terms of the way in which the world trades, will things ever be the same again? I don't think the world will be the same after the coronavirus. Uh, I think that uh, trade had already reached a peak uh, in uh, 2009, trade as a share, of total world GDP, it flattened out. Thereafter, I think we could even see a decline going forward as countries uh, put more emphasis on sourcing supplies of critical materials like uh, medical equipment and other products domestically. And they're going to pull back supply chains, uh, I think, around the world. And so uh, we'll see a re reduction in globalization going forward, I think. It's not that we won't trade, it's we'll trade differently and perhaps more conservatively than we have in the past. Uh, as, as countries um, turn to... Um domestic production and sourcing, how long is it likely to take, do you think, before we see some sort of a, a, an economic recovery? And with so much, so many parts of the world now heading into, uh, into recession, even though the world is going to be trading differently, as you say, there will come an economic recovery, but how long is that going to take? I'm afraid it's going to take a long time. Uh, even in the United States, which, which is one of the most well-positioned countries because we can borrow in our own currency, uh, the U.S. Congressional Budget Office has estimated that the, that, that, that the level of unemployment will be, remain elevated for as long as seven to ten years uh, going into the future. Uh, and that's assuming, I think positively, that we'll get the virus under control quickly. We don't know that that's going to be the case. Um, however, historically, we know going back uh, to the 1918 pandemic in the United States and around the world, which killed millions and millions of people worldwide, uh, the Federal Reserve has done a study showing that those cities that locked down most effectively suffered the least economic harm. Those that opened up too soon suffered prolonged harm uh, as a result of uh, a, a, a deeper uh, problem with the, with the uh, pandemic. So, uh, this, the, again, uh, recovery depends on controlling the virus. Really good to talk to you, sir. Uh, many thanks indeed uh, for being with us. Thank you. And before we end the news, a quick recap of our main headlines. The Medicine Control Agency, MCA, in collaboration with the Pharmacy Council, the Gambia PCG, hereby informed the general public that it is illegal for any person or entity to be engaged in unauthorized import, distribution, storage, sale, and use of COVID-19 test kits or diagnostics in the Gambia. Five new deaths registered bringing to 14 the total number of the commented COVID-19 related deaths in the country. A great case fatality ratio of 2.1% as 173 new cases registered.
in the light of the growing seriousness of the COVID-19 situation in the Gambia, the Truth, Reconciliation and Reparation Commission has decided to suspend its public hearings still for the notice. The suspension will take effect from the 4th of August 2027, the chairman of the commission, Dr. Lamin J.C. say in a statement. The National Human Rights Commission, NHRC, Chairperson Emmanuel Daniel Juf, says his institution and the Gambia Bar Association, GBA, will not join the police to investigate torture allegations leveled on anti-crime unit, Commission Gurgimbo. The Army spokesman, Major Lamin Sanyang, said that it was unethical for soldiers to run to the media and complain about issues regarding their job. He added that the Army operates within a chain of command and that the soldiers concerned should have lodged complaints to their unit commander and not the press. With several countries racing to develop a COVID-19 vaccine, the World Health Organization is downplaying expectations. It had says there may never be a silver bullet that eradicates the virus and that testing and containment efforts are still our best defense. The United Kingdom, meanwhile, has just announced tests that can provide a result within 90 minutes. Hundreds of prisoners are on the run after gunmen affiliated with Isil Isis Ali stormed a prison in Jalalabad. Authorities have regained control but only after at least 30 people were killed including several of the assailants. Trading has resumed on Zimbabwe's stock market after it was held in June to help stabilize the nation's currency. But people there are facing their worst financial crisis in more than a decade and tensions are rising as the economy worsens. Well, that's all for this edition of the news. Do enjoy the rest of our programs and join us tomorrow for more news. Thanks for watching and do have a wonderful night. It's bye for now.